My name is Billy Schoenberg. I'm a developer here with IC Systems, and I'd like to show you Stella Architect 2.0, our state-of-the-art tool for building models and graphical user interfaces, as well as publishing them to the web. Let's start and dump right in with a demonstration of building a model. So I'm going to start by building a little carrying capacity model, which is looking at the population of animals on an island. So our modeling tools have obviously built into them a dimensionality concept, which allows us to check the unit consistency of our models. Our simulation is set up to go from time one to time 13, and I'm gonna change that to be from time one to time 100, and I'm gonna change the time units from months to years. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a flow for the birth of new animals. And I'm just going to assume for the moment that that's five, that every time unit, five new animals are born every year. So I'm going to run this model by hitting the run button in the lower left hand corner of the screen. And we can see the behavior that we get. We get five new animals every time period. If I uh, come over here and I look at this diagram, you'll notice that it's changed. It's showing that uh, this flow is positively impacting population aka as births go up, population is going up. This is the beginnings of our loops that matter feature, which um, automatically calculates for you the loop dominance profile of your model. So let's continue. Let's actually set up a feedback loop between population and births. So to do that, I'm going to set up a birth rate and I'm gonna set that up to be uh, about 5% uh, per year. And then I'm going to hook birth rate up to births. And I want to uh, multiply the population by the birth rate. And when I run this model now, you'll see that I get exponential growth. And the loop panel now shows me that I have a single feedback loop in this model, R1, with one stock, two variables, and it describes 100% of the behavior of this model. If I wanted to know what that loop was, I could hit the toggle button here on the highlight to actually show you um, what that feedback loop is. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the deaths loop in this model. And so I'm going to set it up such that uh, the number of animals who die um, is obviously related to the population with a reference lifetime. I'm going to set that reference lifetime up to be 30 years. And then when I hook that up and set up the equation, population divided by reference lifetime, I'm then able to run the model again. And we see now that we have two feedback loops. So the model is still growing exponentially, but there's also a balancing feedback loop, but it's not dominant. But if I change the parameters in the model, you know, so if I change the reference lifetime to be smaller, we now see that population is declining and that the balancing feedback loop is dominant. This is the beginning of the power of the loops that matter feature. So let's continue the construction of our model and let's add a new variable for carrying capacity. And let's set that carrying capacity to be uh, 500 animals. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a lookup table, which is going to be the effect of crowding because of the carrying capacity on deaths. So let's set up that feedback loop. Population will impact the effect of crowding on deaths, and the effect of crowding on deaths will obviously affect deaths. Also, the carrying capacity will affect the effect of crowding on deaths. The equation for the effect of crowding on deaths is the population divided by the carrying capacity. And let's pretend for a moment we didn't know what the units were here. We can hit this little button here and hit suggest units, and it lets us know that the units for this equation are dimensionless. The next thing we need to do is we need to set this up as a graphical lookup table. So we hit the graphical function panel, mark this variable as a graphical, 
and can use the handy dandy shape selector to set up what the functional response is here. So I'm going to set up this graph such that the effective crowding on deaths can vary between 0 and 10. And the population over carrying capacity go, can go from 0 to 2. And I'm going to choose um, an exponential curve here. Um, and I'm actually going to add um, a bunch more points. I want there to be like 30 something points here. And then I can use the curvature slider to control the shape of that graphical function. I want it to be a steep function, so I've chosen this curvature parameter. Finally, what I want to do is hook up the effective crowding on deaths just by multiplying population um, over the reference lifetime by the effective crowding on deaths. So when I run this model now, you see that we get the standard S-shaped growth pattern. And if we look at the loops table, we now have three loops. We see here that we have our reinforcing feedback loop, our balancing loop that has one stock and three variables. That would be the carrying capacity loop. And then finally, we have our deaths loop. And no matter what we do with the parameters in this model, you'll notice that as long as the model is in equilibrium at the final time point, that the reinforcing and balancing feedback loops each describe 50% of the model's behavior.